But yeah, I, I am a little bit weary that this might generate some negative backlash, but at the end of the day, the message is more important than any backlash that could potentially come of it. Thank you so much for having us here. I'd just like to start us off with a quick karakia to start the kaupapa i tēnei rā. Tukua te wairu a ki a rere ki ngā taumata, hei arahi i a tātou mahi, me tā tātou whai, ngā tikanga a rātou mā, ki a mau, ki a ita, ki a kore ai e ngaro, ki a pupuri, ki a whakamaua, ki a tīna, tīna, hui e, pai ki e. Kia ora mai tātou. Thank you all so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for being here today. Chris and Amy, should I say, let's introduce you properly. We know you. It's about time the rest of the world knows exactly who you are and what you are doing, which is just incredible. We're so excited about sharing today. First, let me introduce Amy Taylor. She is the director of a brand new upcoming documentary all about little old clean green New Zealand's dairy industry, Milt. You are going to hear it everywhere. For now, Amy Taylor. Kia ora. Yeah, it's really great to be on um, on this with you guys. Definitely stoked. It's wonderful to have you here. And we know, you know, what a long time this has been in the making and such a, a, a labour of love for you guys. And also, Chris Hudawai, star of the show and the producer. You're going to see this guy everywhere as well. Lovely to see you, Chris. <laughs> team effort, team effort all the way. But um, yeah. Kia ora mai rā. Thank you, everyone. Kia ora. I'm Chris. And uh, yeah, I cannot reiterate it enough. This was absolutely a, a massive team effort. I'm just so lucky to be part of such an amazing team. Uh, and yeah, thank you too for having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Well, um, for any of our viewers who have yet not seen the, uh, the amazing trailers you guys have put out, what is Milt about? <clears throat> Milt is following Chris's um, journey to uncover the truth about the dairy industry. So basically, he's looking at the different impacts um, on the animals, the people, the environment, and trying to figure out what we can do to get out of the mess that we're in, and not just New Zealand, but other countries also. Um, and I guess one of the easiest ways to sum it up would be that it's a sort of a blend of cowspiracy and what the health, um, but with a focus on dairy. Yeah. Brilliant. Like it is such a fantastic film and we can't wait to get more into this interview and talk mm -hmm. more in depth about it because it really shines a massive big glaring light on uh, what's going on over here. But often the US is set as the benchmark uh, for so many of these documentaries such as Cowspiracy. However, without giving too much away, your groundbreaking documentary provides an additional voice to this narrative, clearly demonstrating that this is a global issue and it can't be dismissed by locality. With Milk now exposing New Zealand's dairy industry, do you feel overseas, view overseas viewers will be more shocked by the statistics and practices coming out of such a small farming nation as compared to the USA? Mm. Yeah, well, um, we usually look at Aotearoa New Zealand as this like charming little country, clean, green, beautiful, and people try and say that, oh no, you know, if dairy, if something like an animal product like dairy is coming from the small, clean, green country, then they must be doing it right. But that's the, my favorite thing I would say about the film is that we're showing the example that no matter how you produce these products, animal-based products, they're inherently, inherently unsustainable, inherently incredibly intensive products that require a huge amount of resources. And the dairy industry here in Aotearoa is trying to play off of that clean, green, beautiful Lord of the Rings branding that this country has. Uh, and they're, they're trying desperately to hang on to that by a lot of the greenwashing and propaganda that you'll see them put out around, uh, for example, things like uh, emissions intensity, which focuses on uh, the emissions uh, of producing a product but it doesn't look at the overall emissions of the industry. They'll talk about how efficient they are in producing a product in comparison to, you know, how it's produced in the US or the UK, rather than looking at their total greenhouse gas footprint, which is just monstrously large, especially for such a small country like Aotearoa. But they'll hang on to that small narrative of the emissions intensity. They'll find some small way to talk about it in a, um, you know, a beneficial way for them to hide the fact that they're actually creating this incredibly large impact. 
Uh, so yeah, I think people will be very surprised because we are known as being a kind of innovative, um, you know, you know, uh, quite inspiring in terms of what we can come up with. We're very creative. We've got what's called the number eight wire, which is about creativity and innovation. Um, but yeah, people are going to see that behind all of that marketing, all of that propaganda that a lot of people who consume dairy um, hang on to, um, it's yet again just more industry uh, marketing so that they can sell an inherently unsustainable product. So true, so yeah, true. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with that. The fact that um, we're seen as being the best in the world and um, if, that, if this is how bad the best country in the world is, then... Mm you know, then the other countries must be as bad or worse. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, a lot of these impacts are global impacts. You know, we've got the climate change thing, we've got the impacts on people's health, obviously the animal suffering. So um, that's that's something that is happening around the world in the dairy industry. Well said. And I think, you know, this is why it's so important what you're doing, because people honestly have no idea what they are part of, what they are contributing to. And I think if they do know, then that's going to be a huge game changer. And as mentioned in the documentary, you know, 95 percent of New Zealand's dairy products are exported. And as you say, this makes it, and the issues and the companies exposed within this film a worldwide concern. So as to provide a, a more local perspective for our viewers, where else in the world, this is what we were thinking, wasn't it? Like, okay, 95% of our products are being exported. Where else in the world is New Zealand sending our dairy products to? And what are they being used for? <clears throat> yep, so primarily our dairy products are being turned into milk powder. A very low commodity good. You know, when you think of something like Aotearoa in New Zealand, you might think of some high value top shelf premium product uh, because that's what we, we should be producing to really harness the brand of this country. But instead, our products that we export primarily to China and uh, Southeast Asian countries like uh, Indonesia, Algeria, um, they've been turned into this really low form commodity, one that can be quite easily replicated, which is a topic that we focus on in the film. Um, and we really see that as a huge issue for farmers here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. The fact that their industry is focusing on what we would say is, you know, the bad end of the market, a, a easily replaceable, replicatable end of the market. Um, that we've become really indebted into, really embedded into this, this form of low commodity goods that we're exporting across the world uh, to a point where our Kiwi farmers here are now stuck in a system that could potentially collapse in the quite near future, which is a topic that we talk about in the film. Because this film, although uh, we are vegans and um, we enjoy talking about the environment, um, the effects of animal products on our health and, of course, ethics around consuming animal-based goods. A lot of the documentary is also about uh, a warning for our Kiwi farmers calling out industry leadership because we believe focusing on this low-end commodity product uh, is going to put our Kiwi farmers' longevity uh, in serious risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah one thing I wanted to add to that was the um, just a quote that didn't make it into the film, but it, it was talking, um, I think it was Peter Fraser, an economist, about how Frontier is basically a FedEx for milk powder. So what we do in New Zealand is we make, you know, ma majority of our dairy exports is milk powder and that just gets shipped around the world. And as vegans, we all know, it gets kind of snuck into all these processed foods that then, you know, that's the kind of bulk of it, going to China, ending up in processed foods. Um and yeah, it's not a necessary thing. And it's definitely going to be changing in the near future. Absolutely. We've got billions and billions of, of animals being killed and, and exploited. And they're not even they're not even yeah. feeding our own our own people. They're not even sustaining us. Um, mm. But, you know, that's a whole other. <laughs> a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. What I yeah. Said. yeah, it leads into your question very nicely about the processed foods. Mm. But um, for folks who haven't been out to New Zealand and, um, well, hopefully they get chance in the future at some stage, but hopefully when they get here, it won't be as the status quo right now where cheese is everywhere. For me, uh, I'm from <sighs> Wales originally. I'm, I'm a Brit. And I came out here and they put cheese on the mashed potatoes, uh, cheese in your pies, cheese in your sausages. Even for me, at that stage, I was a cheeseaholic. And I was like, 
why <laughs> what, what are you doing here you're a whole nother meal like what are you what are you doing um and it just seems out here like it's not a real meal without cheese or at least that's what's been emphasized uh, to us and so when watching the us-based documentaries like cowspiracy and uh some of the likes like that uh, we see how dairy's been incentivized and emphasized within the hospitality industry and also the education system which comes up a little bit in the film as well um and that's all done through government lobbying. So we're wondering in your research for this film, if you find out any more about how New Zealand's approach to this with Fonterra, or as we like to talk about in Fonterraism, um, how they are infiltrating our school systems and if they are also doing that same sort of push to try and get it into the hospitality sector. Yeah, um, so... It's not something we go into in the film, and it's not something that I've actively researched in terms of the push into the hospitality sector, but um, we do have large uh, government lobbying groups on behalf of the industry, uh, such as Dairy NZ. Um, when we tried to reach out to Fonterra, for example, for an interview, they tried to deflect me uh, to Dairy NZ. Uh, of course, you're going to deflect me to, the, to your own lobbying group instead of fronting to these questions yourself. Um, but yes, like you say, similarly, um, the dairy industry in Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, is in the education system. They're in, they're in schools. They have, um, uh, for a long time, they were providing free milk uh, to primary schools. Thankfully, that, that program has now ended, but now they've moved on to uh, a similar program, which is, again, providing free milk in schools, along with um, kind of a cereal uh, breakfast. Um, but more so than being associated in hospitality with things such as cheese, which we all know is a, you know, no one's trying to hide this one, but it, it is a very unhealthy product. I think in terms of our health organizations here, um, that's kind of the one thing they can agree on, that cheese is the primary source of things like saturated fat and, and dietary cholesterol in our diets. And so Fonterra, who market themselves as a dairy nutrition company, um, they more try and associate themselves with uh, positive things, nutrition-based things, healthy-based lifestyles. Um, and instead of that lobbying going into the hospitality sector, you see it in a form of going into dietary guidelines, which we go into briefly in the film. Uh, and also, as I said before, they focus a lot on selling their product based off of the Aotearoa brand, the clean green brand. Um, they're all about their international reputation. So instead of uh, getting into the domestic hospitality market, what we're more likely to see is them focusing on uh, greenwashing and distractive strategies to maintain their international clean green image for their international market, which like I said, is primarily um, milk powder. So we don't so much see the same thing that we might see overseas in terms of hospitality, but we definitely see uh, a lot of efforts from them getting into schools, education systems, dietary guidelines, and also environmental protection spaces. They've partnered with, for example, the Department of Conservation, which is a governmental um, conservation protection group. Um, they're, they're same spokesperson for Fonterra for a long time was also a spokesperson for the Department of Conservation, or at least they've signed multiple deals to have them in the same spaces. Um, so yeah, they, they, they put themselves wherever they can be so that they can have some kind of, yeah. some kind of positive association. That's funny because it actually reminded me of the um, mainland cheese thing. They did some sort of yellow-eyed penguin sort of, um, you know, fundraising thing for Yellow Aid Pity. So they're really, yeah, like you say, trying to get in on that. And I, I really think that, um, yeah, it's funny that you pointed out that we're big on the cheese thing here. It's just a cultural thing. Like, you kind yeah. of, I grew up eating toasted cheese sandwiches and, mm. you know, like I was as addicted to cheese as everyone else. And, um, you know, I can totally see why and how that happens because kids just get, you know, plied with it from such a young age. And yeah, I mean, it's yeah, delicious. It's, cult, it's delicious, right? <laughs> and we all know about that little the, the compound, the casomorphine, that has its slight physical addiction aspect to it. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I didn't go vegan because of a taste thing. You know, I was addicted to cheese like many other people. Um, so it's clear why they put it in lots of products. It has a higher shelf life as well than uh, the plain old cow's milk. Um, but yeah, it, it is everywhere, but just like everywhere else, I would say. 
Absolutely. It takes me back to those two years that we spent down in the rural Southland where, you know, the cheese roll is the national, you know, <laughs> the I'm, national food. Yeah. I've got to point out to people, they call it a cheese roll and it's a piece of like white sliced bread with like cheese and then that's literally rolled up. and so Like an me, asparagus roll, but with cheese in it. Yeah. I don't it's cheese. <laughs> Yeah, for me as a Brit, I'm like a roll is like a bap, you know, and so that confused the hell out yeah, of me. But it's a rolled up bit of bread. <laughs> and you're yeah. sort of right, Amy. I remember the whole mainland with the the yellow eyed penguin. Mm. You know, my fridge. We used to collect the little charts, and we had to buy that cheese yeah. because we were saving the penguins when we bought that cheese back yeah. in the day. So, <laughs> yeah, there's this. Yeah, they're very good at that stuff. Yeah, they're really really good at the greenwashing. Definitely. And, you know, milk does a brilliant yeah. job of highlighting um, not just the, the injustices being done to the, the animals and the planet, but also the people of, of Aotearoa, New Zealand, with an added emphasis on Indigenous Maori communities. We know this is a cause uh, very close to your heart, Chris. And is it your hope that this documentary will also shine a light on the institutional racism both Maori and Pacifica face from our country's stance on milk? Mm. <sighs> Yeah, this is a, a really important topic for me. And I was so glad when we agreed for the film to have some of these narratives. Um, for me, I grew up alongside my my river, my awa, which is called Mangatawa. And I was able to swim in this river every day. Like, you know, kids just love water. We all, we all need water. It's the life force. We all know this. But for me, it was kind of my recreational go-to as a child. Uh, and I know for so many, especially rural Māori, and but any any Ma any rural community, sorry, um, they rely on these natural resources, especially for recreation for our children. They need these types of pastimes and ways to connect with nature. Without these um, natural recreational, or for some cases, food sources, um, we start to really drift away from having a, a deep connection with Te Taio, the environment. And I've seen it with a lot of people, a lot of communities. And there's one community that we talk about in the film, Lake Omapere, um, the, the community based around that lake, which is called the food basket of Ngāpuhi. Um, the destruction of that lake, the degradation of that lake because of colonial industries. First they came in and cleared down all the trees then they covered the landscape in farms, uh, has led to the neighboring towns around this lake, essentially becoming a ghost town. Um, and so, we talk about that in the film, which I'm so glad we were able to touch on because the effects of animal farming and colonization on Aotearoa and New Zealand have been just immeasurable, immeasurable. We can't, I can't uh, um, overstate how impactful animal farming has been on Maori communities in Aotearoa New Zealand. And I'm sure it's the same case across the world, but I'll just speak to um, Aotearoa. Um, and so, yes, it's in the film and I'm really hoping, um, and, I, and, I, and I believe they will, um, resonate with this message that we're putting in the film because at the moment the dairy industry is seen as a kind of like hero character in our society it's seen as the backbone of the economy um, and I'm hoping in the film this will give people strength and information and clarity and the ability to question this kind of hero status that the dairy industry currently has and not only in our, our health uh, statistics for example our health guidelines um, Māori, just like all other people, are encouraged to consume dairy products, uh, even though we have higher rates of lactose intolerance than non-Māori. Uh, and so for me, that's racist, to encourage dietary guidelines that harm us, essentially, is racist. And we highlight things like that in the film. And yes, uh, this, this topic, of course, means the world to me. And I really do hope um, that is the right nerve it is a sensitive topic, um, but really, fingers crossed that it has a, a positive resonance um, with Te Iwi Māori, my whanonga, my whānau, uh, because really uh, there is a shadow lingering over Aotearoa, and it's the shadow of a cow, and people need to finally see that for what it is. Mm. Mm. It's so true. Yeah, it's I, so I just wanted to add something to that, just um, that the fact that it seems so odd that we're marketing this product that from an animal that never used to exist in this country. <laughs> it's just so crazy, you know, to the Indigenous culture. It seems insane to me mm -hmm. to be marketing um, marketing that product. 
yeah no. it's true it's another way it's an it's another way um we've spoken about you know human exploitation also in in these industries but it's an it's another way it's another form of exploitation yet another form that i think a lot of people wouldn't have considered and and i've yeah my heart broke for those people watching it so um but you know I'm, I'm i'm really glad that that you were able to include it too very important i think it's a fantastic insight for overseas viewers as well because I feel a lot of people don't know much about uh, the indigenous people of New Zealand. A lot of people just hear about Lord of Rings, clean, green, and that's about it, you know. And so to really have that light shone um, is, is fantastic. And, yeah, you, you do a wonderful job. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's I've got to say as well, I saw recent milk ads and uh, most of the kids that they have on the, the advert are all Maori as well at the, at the front of it. And I'm like, once <laughs> again, you know, just trying to promote that to those folks is just... Um, yeah, need it to be healthy, don't we? <laughs> don't need it. Don't need it at all. Let's stop stop this crap anyway. Yeah. But um, we touched on this point earlier about um, farmers in the documentary. And when we first saw milk come up, we were like, oh, this is this is probably going to be something that's going to be hating on farmers, you know, like this can be really harsh on them. But mm. you've done such a fantastic job to create such a well-rounded well-informed film that exposes the damage but also provides a solution and connects us with the farmers who are caught up in that system and a lot of the advocating that we've done against the dairy industry here at vegan fda it was we've been trying to point out the fact that a lot of these people are entrapped in these systems you know it's years and years and years of conditioning that have got people stuck into this industry and a lot of them don't have a foot to stand on at the end of the day and so we love how you've done it, but why was it so important to you guys to show that unified front um, in reaching these solutions? Um, I guess I feel I feel like when we meet these people, you know, they're just such lovely people as well. You know, we meet dairy farmers. Well, we've met a lot through the course of making the film, and you know, in general, you know people. If you're from this country, you know people who are in the dairy industry, and you know, you care about their well-being as well and and it's just really important um to help to help them kind of move out of that because they were encouraged to to go into intensive farming you know by the government by society um in a lot of cases that was that was kind of pushed on them um and yeah the only way to kind of have positive change is to kind of to help them move out of it as well yeah definitely i mean uh, if you have a solution and it doesn't bring everyone with you, then for me, it's not really a solution. And, you know, it's always been about, you know, you hate the game, not the player, you know, you fight the system, not the systemized. And so just like every other thing, because of this industry, um, dairy farmers have been victimized. They are part of this whole system that's been blowing out everywhere. And it's also, you know, it's blowing out for the environment, for the animals, there's corruption in our government and our health systems and for the farmers them themselves they've been let down by farming leadership for too long absolutely i'm, I'm really glad that you know you, you i mean as you know you've, we've spent you've spent so much time um interviewing right across the board and spending time with people and i'm really glad that you got to see that insight into um you know the humanity of dairy farmers they're people just like everybody else and and you know as, as you guys know i was part of that industry for a long time and people say to me now, you know, how can you talk to the people that, you know, you were once in the farming community where it's like, well, you know, I may not do what they do anymore. And I may rather that they did something else. Um, but I have seen them in the capacity as parents. I've seen them raising their children. I've seen them in the capacity as grandparents. And, you know, like you say, they are victimized. They're people just like everybody else that have been entrapped in the system. So I, I think you did a wonderful job. And I love, I'm not going to say too much, but I love the farmer that you interview. Um, he is just, yeah, absolutely. He's, he's an absolute gem. Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom Well. Tom. Tom. Yeah. Tom. yeah. I love yeah, him. he's great. Yeah. We love him too. All of them were fantastic. It was it was just so nice to, um, yeah, and to see people kind of making positive change and, and yeah, that was one of the best parts of the film. Definitely. Of, the, of making the film, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> absolutely. It must have been a, you know, absolutely, you know, incredible experience, life changing, I'm sure. And, and this is just the beginning. Yeah. I have to say, we've, we've watched it a couple of times because you're lovely and you let us have a bit of a sneak peek. <laughs> and, you know, we, we also had the privilege of, um, 
being able to watch it with our four other housemates who are currently mm. vegetarian and flexitarian respectively or should we say they were um, <laughs> it was so interesting to see how they reacted to the film you know it really impacted them all in different ways um we, we had a uh, mom and a dad and two teenagers greg the dad who is very business-minded um it what you know really resonated with him having the statistics laid out before him i mean you guys have done an incredible very very thorough job there there it's just it's very confronting and you could just see him just going whoa at, at this information uh whereas the mother and teenage daughter they were more affected by what was happening to the animals as i'm sure a lot of people will be none of them could believe how much is hidden from the public by the industry um even us who who mm. know what you know a, a good <laughs> amount of what goes on and you'll be pleased to know their fridge is now a dairy free zone um you know they, they've gone through the the milk the, the cheese is, is something that they also admitted you know the milk is the cheese is what they've that's the big thing, isn't it, mm. with the, with a lot of people? And so, you know, it's brilliant that it's impacted them in such a way that they're like, no, we don't want any part of this in our kitchen. Yeah. But speaking to the mum and daughter afterwards, they wanted to know why it was that you didn't choose to include some more of that really hard hitting, more graphic footage. Uh, for us, having watched many docos in this genre, we feel it's the perfect amount. And to anyone watching this, don't be put off by thinking, oh my god, it's going to be too graphic. We can't deal. You know, it's you guys have. have yeah. chosen very very well and what you've chosen is very important but you know would you like to elaborate on your choice of footage at all how was it to find that balance and, and you know could you have just made a whole doco of that alone yeah I think that was um a very early decision that was made that that it was not going to be off-putting to people we wanted to reach a mainstream audience and um yeah we didn't want to put off people who um yeah didn't want to see really graphic material so we obviously don't show any animal being killed and we, and we wanted to just show you know but we didn't want to kind of um, brush over the fact that there is suffering going on so we we had to kind of explain briefly you know what happens there but without without putting people off but yeah without um you know not acknowledging that that does happen so yeah 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 it's definitely um for me, it's like, you know, you don't need to show the gore of war to have people empathize with the victims. For me, at least, what's more powerful is learning about the war itself, the why, the how, the who, uh, and and how unjustified it is. Because otherwise, you know, we weren't just going to make um, <laughs> Dominion 2. I mean, <laughs> we didn't want to just traumatize people. <laughs> um no hate to dominion creators love y'all um but yeah we didn't want to traumatize people we wanted to have a very soft um uh, approach to how we're portraying this incredibly important message uh i'm an animal rights activist and i would love to just get in people's faces and show them what's happening but the message and making sure that it's communicated in a way that people are going to resonate with is far more important than you know the kind of you know, the, the, the thing that I would like people to take, um, it's, it's not um, my preference in terms of advocacy that takes priority here. It's getting the message to people in a way that's going to resonate with them. Done such a fantastic yeah, we job. Have, we could have gone quite hardcore with it because obviously we worked with Debbie from Farmwatch and she's got, you know, huge amounts of horrific footage that we had access to and um and yeah it's out there but you know a lot of people know that it exists and we didn't need to include it yeah. so you guys have done such a fantastic job because you hit it on so many different elements and like with greg you know and him his business mind ticking over and like the mother and daughter and how they you know there's just so many mm. elements to to bounce off with the film and mm. like even between us um for me, doing a lot of the video editing for FTA, I see a lot of very heavy graphic footage, but that doesn't affect me nearly as much as what Jackie writes about that footage, whereas it's the other way around. Um, you get affected by the images, not so much the words. And so for all of us, even within this uh, animal rights sort of um, field, we all react differently to different elements. And yeah, this film just it, it ticks so many boxes, gets so many different gears turning for different people. So mm -hmm. I really can't wait. And like, mm -hmm. this is, you know, a little bit of proof that, you know, if you've got family in your household and you're just trying to get that milk out <laughs> the door, <laughs> you know, this is what to put on your calendar. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't wait for my family to see it as well. 
Oh, fantastic. We, we, oh, they've we not seen them it yet, Amy. Oh, my word. <laughs> no, there's a bunch of them coming to the premiere in Christchurch. So um, hopefully, uh, and a lot of them are yeah, cheese addicts like I was. So, yeah, hopefully there might be a little bit of a change there. Hmm. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, keep us posted. They will be incredibly proud of you. I'm not even related, yeah. and I'm just so proud of you both. <laughs> Thank you. It's so nice to hear that. Yeah. Thank you, too. But um, in the film, it shows you, Chris, uh, talking with Susie Amos Cameron, uh, wife of the legendary film director, James Cameron. And after seeing some of your footage, Susie actually came on board as executive uh, producer, along with conspiracy uh, producer Keegan Cohen. It must have been just such a fantastic feeling having both of them coming on board and supporting your work. And you must have felt validated with having their sort of backing. Um, what was it about the film that got Susie and Kean on board? Um, with Susie, it was basically that, um, you know, we found out that they were, you know, they had this ex-dairy farm that they were growing organic vegetables on and just seemed like a perfect opportunity to talk to people who were doing that well and um and so I guess once we did meet with her and do the interview um and she kind of figured out what we were doing with the film and then she saw a cut of the film it kind of ticks all the boxes for her because she's very passionate about the environment and health and animals so she's um and the farmers also she's also you know really mm. um keen on seeing a positive change for farmers so Basically, it was kind of a no-brainer for her. And then with Keegan, um, he got involved initially to do the music and then saw the film develop and basically um, was happy to jump on board as executive producer too. But yeah, both of those things were kind of like, you know, pinch yourself, is this really happening? Such great support from people. Um, and yeah, and not only them, we've had other people as well kind of reaching out to us and being supportive and... Yeah, it's fantastic. It really helps kind of amplify the the impact of the film, I think, getting those um, kind of well-known people backing it. Mm. Brilliant. Definitely affirms what you're, you know, just, just really helps to affirm what you do. We know we know the importance of what you're doing, you know, being being residents over here, but yeah. it, it's, it's wonderful to get that. And, and you've mentioned it before, you know, it, it's like mm -hmm. a, it's kind of like a Kiwi version of a, a combination of, of cowspiracy and what the health so no wonder Keegan was so supportive like I, I believe you said you know this <laughs> milk takes off where takes up where cowspiracy left off and yeah. you know Chris is the our um our Kiwi Kip isn't he really <laughs> like <it's>, yeah <laughs> Kiwi and Kip. he does a fantastic <laughs> job you know if, if you've enjoyed either of those documentaries you are just gonna love this and you're gonna want to share it and you know let's face it milk does stand to undermine the status quo of, of Aotearoa New Zealand. And if it has the effect we think it will, it is going to disrupt the country's primary industry. Within the, I was going to say, I was trying to be a bit more understated. Yeah. There's no stopping this one. <laughs> Within the film, we briefly, or you, briefly talked about the, yeah. um, the, the danger, um, particularly you, Chris, faced while creating the documentary. Is there anything that you're doing now to brace for the coming storm with its release? Mm. Do you want to touch on that one, Amy, and then I can maybe speak after you? I don't know. I think it's going to hit you more than it's going to hit me. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so well, <laughs> yeah so um, obviously um, we approached Keegan about this one because this is something that they, they touch on in their documentaries. And his advice to us was to, was to include this narrative in the documentary. Uh, and so we did. Um, for me personally, getting the message out there is more important than anything else. If there's, if there's any backlash that's coming uh, my way or Amy's way, um, then that's, that's, this is what it is uh, because the message itself uh, is more important than any, any one of us as individuals can face. Obviously I do feel um, for my family, for my partner, um, if they receive, you know, even just negative vibes, you know, from their work colleagues or their neighbors and stuff, I'm, I, I, Fingers crossed, touch wood, that such doesn't happen. Um, I personally haven't been doing anything to prepare myself besides just keeping it in my mind that it may happen, uh, keeping in mind that I may need to de-escalate certain situations um, and reminding myself that when these conversations uh, arise, if they do, is to, to come at it compassionately, um, understand that this is people's livelihood, um, to 
to be understanding of their frustration, especially if they haven't seen the film. If they come at us with frustration without seeing the film, then it's it's safe to uh, assume where their fear is coming from, that we're just, you know, non-compassionate, um, blind, ignorant vegans telling other people what to do. Um, but the hope is that people really do watch the film and that they understand that we're coming from a place um, that we think is solutions based for everybody, not just for vegans and animals and our perspective of the environment, but for all of Aotearoa, for the whole world, as a matter of fact, because this is a global issue. Um, and yeah, we hope that this can generate discussions. That's why the film was made, so that we can talk about this incredibly important issue. Um, I have considered taking my vegan stickers off of my car, but <laughs> I don't know, I'm like hanging on to them. Like, I really want to just keep them there, but... But yeah, I, I am a little bit wary that this might generate some negative backlash, but at the end of the day, the message is more important than any backlash that could potentially come of it. Yeah, and I, I think having the message in the in the film, having that, you know, covering the fact that it is potentially a dangerous thing, um, you know, it's just putting it out there that we're aware of that. And Keegan also pointed out it's less likely for things to happen than if, if you're kind of acknowledging that. Um, so I'm not sure. If that's quite true but he did say that we'd get more support for the film than hate and that seems to be what is happening so far at least um and yeah i i just um i hope people just realize and can see that we have good intentions with it mm, yeah absolutely yeah i i i definitely think if people watch the film mm. um how can they hate you know it's you've laid down such a a great way and such a gentle way and as i say you know collaborating with other people you know being a, a united front is so fantastic i just hope like for the farmers i i sort of counted it a bit as we were watching films about sort of 10 minutes in that's when sort of more the farmer sort of aspect comes in so hopefully they just watch that initial 10 minutes and then you know mm. that, that's um that's some in for it you know and that they'll be on on board the train yeah. so um yeah, yeah it'll yeah. be really good we did have some feedback at one stage to get the farmers like really really right up the front but you know we kind of had to lay out the bigger picture as well first mm -hmm. so yeah but yeah that's our hope that farmers will um will kind of see that we're being sympathetic mm, yeah i think for a 90 or so minute documentary i've done i think you've done an incredible job of, of covering so many bases and just producing such a well mm. well rounded out because mm, that's know. the thing there's just so many different bits you can go shooting off yeah. and there's just um yeah like I, I do not envy your editing, Amy, with so many hours of footage, which um, actually leads in very well into what I was going to ask yes, next. Yes, going was, back, going back. Yeah. Um, we had the pleasure of being there um, on set when Jackie actually makes a small camera. You guys even film. let me in. <laughs> you really let the riff wrap yeah. in, don't you? <laughs> It was such a shame that we couldn't include more of that whole interview. That's the only gutting thing. But anyway, I'll let you carry on with your question. Cause... Well, um, that day when we were filming it, well, you were filming it, we were there as well at Hoo-Ha Sanctuary here in New Zealand. And um, it was a crazy day. Um, the mud was like up to your knees. It was, it'd been raining the last couple of days. And we're in this small little uh, room there. Um, what the viewers won't know because it is, you know um it is shot wonderfully and the sound is perfect but i was in the other room trying to hold this miniature pony and these two baby goats because on the wooden floors of the pony was trying to dance around and sort of see what's going on and there's big old reg the um massive mastiff who yes. sadly he's not with us anymore no he's had but, it. Um, brett mckenzie the pig was in the spare room <laughs> hammering at the door trying to come out it was all on i was covered in yeah. pink slobber and it was oh, great it was, yeah. it was, it was hail i remember it was hailing on top of the tin room uh -huh. <laughs> it was just crazy you know, it's just one of those um, uh, one of those crazy sanctuary days. Like, if anyone's been to an animal sanctuary, you'll know. Like, just give it five minutes, and there's like chaos will ensue somehow. You know, and it's lovely chaos. But Beautiful. you know, as we sort of touched on it, um, you've shot hundreds of hours of footage for this film, and yeah, and edited together such a fantastic narrative from all those m millions of moments, you know, as an editor, I'm just like, oh my God, you know, um, do you have any favorite moments that didn't quite make the cut? Um, I guess in terms of 
yeah, uh, mostly it was just the interview material, the interview content. We had to cut out a handful of people just completely, which was really gutting because the interviews were great. But it was just that we couldn't weave them into the storyline in that 90 minutes, you know. So um, majority of the interviews we did were, you know, an hour and a half, two hours long. And some people we only use, you know, like just one little sentence or it was just it's really hard to let go of all the gold from the interviews and yeah, some of the, the hard case interviews that we did with Tart Bakery owner, who's just a, a classic. She just came up with so much hilarious, but also wise stuff. Um, mm. And then to leave that completely out. But we do want to create some extra content at some stage so we can hopefully share more from the interviews. Um, but yeah, so funny that you mentioned all those animals and all the craziness because it felt like every single interview we did, we had some sort of animal issue or some sort of, you know, major kind of weather event happening, or it was just that, you know, documentary is not easy <laughs> to deal with those kind of things. Mm. But yeah, as you say, we had about 100 hours of interviews alone, um, at least, I think. So it was, it was hard trying to whittle that down. I would also wow. just say, even Jackie, a lot of the stuff that you said, it kind of touches back on, um, you know, the lack of, confrontational upsetting animal um things in the film you talked a lot about a lot of you know really powerful things from your experience in the dairy industry and i would have loved to and have included a lot of that um but i think it was again a case of us having to drop some of those more confrontational really hard to talk about painful things but i would have loved to have, have seen more of that in the documentary but yeah like we said it's about that balance Oh, absolutely. Hopefully, like, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get it out there, but in another format. Mm. Mm. Oh, you know what? I was really relieved because you guys had me crying there that day. It was the first time that I'd really oh. spoken out publicly about my years. And I was so yeah. relieved when I saw the, the yeah. final doco thinking, oh, thank God they did. Everyone's going to see me <laughs> crying. Like, crying. you know. <laughs> you yeah, well, if you the people cried in the interviews. Yeah, we tried to avoid all of that. We, we kind of wanted to keep everyone happy and and um yeah but it's also sticking to that storyline it's just super hard to to get in everything so yeah yeah and that's another thing as well which is sad about cutting parts out of the film and not being able to include everything just the fact that so many people gave us their time and gave such amazing genuine interviews really opening themselves up and so yeah i just have to say thank you to everyone that we were able to interview who gave parts of themselves for us. Unfortunately, some of it we weren't able to use, but um, I'm sure those who support the project and support the film once they've seen the final product, um, they'll appreciate that it's difficult to weave things in. But again, just a massive thank you to everyone uh, that we interviewed. Mm. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, have you seen it twice now? I think it's it's perfect <laughs> as it is. You know, I it's it's just a wonderful job and you know apart from from muggins here we we see appearances from one of my favorite people my chosen prime minister to be quite honest dr mike joy um we, we see him in there talking his his amazing mikeness um, yeah. <laughs> um we've even yeah, got he's great even got the gorgeous uh jane goodall in there as well and you know your research has taken you all over the country you've managed to get this out even with you know the country being in lockdown for a good part of this year and up until then it's been a labor of love for at least two years um out of all the countless things that you've researched you've learned and you've witnessed what stayed with you the most from this whole experience i'll let you go first chris oh well the the dairy industry you know they are the biggest use of all resources in aotearoa new zealand they're the biggest uh, the biggest company in the country and so obviously they impact so many things we could have included so many different topics and aspects of this industry that are blowing out and creating negative impacts and so uh, I think the thing that stays with me the most is just the fact that this industry is oh, massive and they're just failing in absolutely every way and it's just the the breadth of things um, there's not really anything in particular. <clears throat> it's just a simple fact that it is simply overwhelming to think about all of the negative implications of this industry. There's so many things. Everyone we talk to 
talked about so many different aspects and every every time it was just a reminder of wow another thing another thing another thing uh and it's 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 overwhelming the fact that something like this hasn't been created before i mean it was just only a matter of time uh that a, a, a co-papa a project like this was going to be produced to highlight um the shortcomings of this industry because it's so vast um so that's what has stuck with me just the fact that there are so many impacts of this terrible industry um we could have made a documentary that was like you know we could make sequel after sequel um but yeah no specific thing for me it always does come down to the impact on water use and water pollution um because i think water is so incredibly important but yeah just the breadth of things it's just ridiculous yeah i have to say the thing that struck me the most was the amount of destruction and devastation that goes on in the industry for something that is not even needed you know that's not even an essential thing it's kind of pitched to us as being essential but it's totally not in fact it's mostly harmful um and it just seems and, and then like also when i'm driving through the countryside now i see things totally differently i'm kind of looking at all this land that should have had native forest and wetlands and and instead you've got these paddocks with you know like mother cows with full udders of milk with no babies around and and they're kind of trudging off to the cow shed to get milked and I don't know I just see that so clearly now and you cannot avoid it when you're driving through the country it's just it's in your face everywhere and and people just see it as being normal but um you know, especially having spent two years focusing on it, it just seems so completely not normal. And the fact that, you know, two million calves get killed in this country um, over such a short space of time, you know, th three months or so, um, killing that many newborn calves, it's just, it's kind of haunting to realise that. And uh, yeah, just that it comes back to that it's not essential. Mm. Well said. Yeah, I I know you know as someone that was part of the industry, it was it was very interesting and also yeah, it was it was a, a reality check to see in the in the docker how you said you know the industry is responsible for so much propaganda that that goes on to farmers. You know the the if the farmers have a problem with something, then they'll go to the industry. Look, people are saying this about us all. You know what about this and what about that? And the industry is constantly sort of saying, no, you're doing a good thing. You're feeding the country. They need us. Don't you listen to those nasty people? You know, um, and it was very much that for for me working in the industry. It was, you know, you think that you're doing the best thing, and you really do think that people need, despite the fact I was lactose intolerant my whole life, um, you know, that you think that you're you're really providing an essential service and you're doing something good so you know it's yeah, yeah I, I think you've just approached it all so well and um i i hope yeah i hope that other farmers really really do i hope everybody watches it mm, yeah wait. well that's the other thing that stayed with me was just the hope you know like obviously there's the devastation and the destruction but it's the the hope and the fact that new zealand um Aotearoa can be just so much better there's just so much more we can do and mm. um just a matter of yeah. shifting that shifting that direction yeah. i can't wait for our viewers to see it and like especially for those out here in new zealand who can drive those country roads and realize that normalized mm -hmm. destruction that normalized violence and we know it all too well when we drive about now it's always a case of we don't see the peaceful we, pastoral scenes anymore no, do we <laughs> we just see the the destruction and death that lines our roads you know it's just a shade of green that's that's the only sort of difference so um yeah, I can't. I gotta wait for people to get and watch it, but more <laughs> yeah. importantly, um, get and take action and be supporting the film, mm. you know. And so, we we're wondering with the lead up to the launch, is there anything our audience, our activists can be doing to help support you? And then, what else we can do to follow up and continue that support and keep hammering out that message for uh, for the animals, mm. for the planet, for Aotearoa, New Zealand, like for everyone. Yeah, basically, I think the first thing people need to do is um, follow us on social media so we can kind of keep everyone updated with what's happening. Um, obviously, we're having a premiere soon, so if anyone can get along to that, um, you know, obviously it's limited to this country at this stage. But yeah, basically, um, sharing the trailer is huge. If people can share the trailer and um, just get people talking about it. Um, requesting us on Netflix would be a bonus. <laughs> That's obviously the goal to get a big global 
release and um and yeah we're going to be kind of rolling out a bit more of a social impact campaign which will be um actions that people can take so we'll have more information about that on the website and get that out on social media um once the film is out there in the world we um we'll have to get and make sure that we provide a link you know for the request on netflix thing as well with this interview yeah, and absolutely yeah. that needs to I be don't, the goal i don't know it? how um I don't know how worthwhile that is. You know, obviously we're, we're dealing with distribution company and that kind of thing as well. But obviously um, I don't know how, how seriously Netflix takes that request to title thing, but um, you know, it can't hurt, I guess. Well, if we rile up our hornet's nest enough around here, you know, get all these angry <laughs> yeah, buzzing vegans, you know. Yeah, maybe we need like, a nice friendly <laughs> sounding permission, um, not permission, petition. Yeah. P- petition for permission yeah, yeah. for net friendly. Permission yeah. petition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well hopefully they'll be interested it is the kind of film that you know that they kind of already have on there there's similarities with obviously cowspiracy and what the health but yeah we have heard that it's a bit trickier to get it on there than what we had first thought so um we'll just we'll see but one way or another we'll we'll have it available um online worldwide brilliant that is fantastic which leads nicely into my next question is you know are people going to be able to watch it anywhere in the world chris huriwai amy taylor Thank you, you <laughs> legends. Thank you for, you know, for sharing the truth of, of what is happening here. Thank you for representing the average Kiwi. Thank you for representing Māori. Thank you for representing the cows, the, the two million babies that get killed every single year. Just thank you. You know, like you said, this, this had to happen one day, but I can't think of anybody more perfect to, to have taken on this project and, and to do it so perfectly as, as you two both. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> oh, tēnā Straight back at you. Yeah, you, you yeah. too as well. You're doing amazing work. And um, thank you to all of our supporters as well, everyone who's been um, supporting us so far um, through the um, getting the message out there. Um, you two uh, are prime examples of that. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to Vegan FTA. Um, and thank you to all the um, supporters across the country, across the world. Uh, and I have to give a big shout out as well to Amy, our director. Um, she's really been the one that has pulled all of this together. So thank you so much, Amy. You're amazing. And, uh, again, <laughs> oh, that's so again. nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I just wanted to point out, yeah, Jack and Gareth, you know, we kind of, we met you, um, you know, when we were filming this and, and you've been so supportive and, you know, doing the interview with us and all of that and helping with promoting it. It's fantastic. Mm. Really, really grateful. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> I'm just going to close my little, yeah. little contribution here with a karakia. The way it is, it's yeah. kind of, you know, you open the door, you open the space, and then you bring the closure to it at Perfect. the end. But again, cool. thank you all so much. Amy, see you soon. Unuhia, unuhia, unuhia i te rutapunui ki a wātia ki a māma te ngāko te tinana te wairua i te aratakatū. Ko ia rā e rongo wakairi hea ke kīrunga, kīrunga, ki a wātia, ki a wātia. Ai rā, ko a wātia. Hau, pai mārere. Kia ora mai tātou, I'm out of here.